Hey, welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. We got to talk a little bit about, I guess, intentional communities or putting stuff on others, which which seems to go very, very much together. There's there's a there's a thing called teapot. Teapot is T P O T, and I think originally it stood for this part of Twitter, and it was kind of a general laughing um, commentary. And now it teapot actually means this pot of this part of teapot. And it's across several networks, like you've got groups of people who are in or associated with or comfortable with Teapot in places like Mastodon and Blue Sky and X with Twitter and Facebook. And it's just kind of all over, AirChat and Nomad. And um, it's not, so it's, it's not a group. It's not like a homogenous group. It's not a thing. It's a whole bunch of things, okay? There are people who do this this teapot thing from all sorts of different walks and areas of life, okay? Not everyone is terribly online. Not everyone agrees with the Manosphere effort maxing workout three times a day thing. Not everyone is woo. Not everyone is what what whatever, you know? There, there's a lot of um, disability talk. There's a lot of economic talk. There's a lot of Bitcoiners. There's... A lot of AI bros, there's a lot of accelerationists, like, there's a lot of everything. It's actually kind of a amplified microcosm of society where the amplification is to the edges, the stuff that's not mainstream. So it's kind of like this huge amount of non-mainstream. And it does, it does have s centers of feeling. Um, the the destructive anarchists, the anarchists who don't want anything except to blow stuff up, the nihilists, they're not very well represented in Teapot. You know, there's a couple people you might you might meet. Um, the actual Antifa fascists, you don't find them in Teapot very much. You know, but 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 even there, they're kind of associated. Like there's people on the edges, on the edges, on the edges, <clears throat> and you'll have people in in this this group, this loose set of groups, because it's not a singular group, who, you know, from five or six different subgroups will be all be attached to this one individual who happens to be a nihilistic anarchist. Like, like even, even in the outer spaces, there's still a lot of connection. But yeah, you could think of it as an amplified microcosm of the edges of society, and that's a really good way to look at it. There's, you know, there's voices, and the voices kind of come and go, and the themes come and go. You know, it's springtime, so there's a certain kind of atmosphere in, in teapot communication that you don't find around winter time. There's the occasional events. Um, people have real-life events like vibe camps or eclipse camp or whatever, and you'll find the discourse, the conversations f follow along there, or the people who are organizing it. Um, as with any other group set like that, where a lot of people know each other. And you've, we're talking about tens of thousands of people, okay? We, we really are. And, but there's, you know, a couple hundred who form a core kind of cohort and have a lot more association with each other. So when you're looking at those people, you'll find something like um, Who Dated Who starts to have a huge social impact you know you you're against these people and for these people because there was a bad breakup and this normal social stuff so one of my one of my one of my friends someone who i actually like and enjoy in teapot is, is named ryan and had has a very strong disagreement with the idea that any of these groups any of this huge mixture of groups that forms teapot should have any in-groupness. There should not be anything defined as an in-group. And in-group is a psychological term that comes from the 1970s that refers specifically to how we build identities and senses of security and life fulfillment strategies based around similarities, comfort, families, in inside our experience, inside our reality, inside our commitment groups, in groups. Um, 
apparently, if you are um, a millennial or a Zoomer and you don't know the history or how this term works or something and, and you decide that it's, his, it's just a, another word for high school click or something, which it isn't, um, then all of a sudden this word has huge psychic evil connotations and overtones, which it doesn't. And in order to prevent this 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 mm, amalgamation of edges that's called teapot from being bad, evil, something, you have to get rid of all concepts of ingroupness. And that's 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 not how it works. Okay. Um, another phrase that's used in this argument is that the the idea of exclusivity, exclusion, is automatically evil and bad and everything everything to operate well morally appropriately has to be all inclusive and all all for the all of the all and no individual and just the all 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 and that doesn't work that's none of this stuff is how humans work none of this stuff is how an intentional community can be built so someone else who's associated with this um is trying to build a is trying to make their spiritual school out of these thousands of people who are loosely affiliated by forming them. I want to say forcing, but he disagrees with the idea of, of that he's forcing them by doing all this definition work and everything. Forming them into Venn diagrams that overlap that will then interact according to his model of appropriate interaction so that everything will be all for the all of the all of the all. And if I if I seem like I'm mocking this, it's it's because I am. Um, that's not how any of this works. It's not how you it's not how you grow a community. It's not how you grow an intentional community. It's not how you set up. He's set up a form, and now he wants to put people into his form. He's he's made a he's made a spirograph drawing, and now he wants to assign the universe into the spaces in the spirograph drawing. And that, that's really, that's exactly the opposite of how you do this. So like for, for Ryan, I would suggest that these ideas of psychic trauma that come from his reaction to the concept of in-groups, privacy, exclusivity, not belonging to this while belonging to that, all of that stuff that he has going on is inside of him and not some objective evil. Um, <clears throat> not saying that people aren't mean. Plenty of people are mean all the time. But that's not, that's not, you know, that's not um, what in-group refers to at all. And so you've got that. And then this idea that you're going to enforce healing on the group because you don't like a word and something else again. So let's bring this back because I am, as usual, on about 20 tangents. An intentional community can be formed by people who share some amount of common goals or alignments or something. Now, we're humans, and we can belong to more than one social grouping at a time. It's actually one of our really big things is we, we have an infinite capacity to create new social hierarchies so everyone can actually be a top-tier lobster in some area because we can always just create new ones. It's really cool. Everyone can be a winner, and that's awesome. So... When you create an intentional community, it's not the one and only thing. It's just, it's something. How much of a part of your life it might be depends on how it fits with you, how much effort you're putting in, what the comfort levels are. There's a lot that goes into this. So it can, it can vary. If you want to build an intentional community, you have to figure out what the intent is. The intent is to fit everyone into boxes and make them work in the same way to maximize your idea of universal harmony doesn't work. 
it's not going to work. If you, for example, have an intentional community, the intention is to make sure that everyone has access to fresh food. Then you build, you know, you build your CEO, the CSA, you build your co-op, you build your bountiful baskets. And that is an intentional community. You want to make it so that everyone has a somatic experience and somatic healing. Everyone's giving each other massages and energy healing and everything. That's a great, that's a fine way to do intentional community. You can combine the two. You can add it together. You can make it bigger. But it has to be what people want. It has to be based on the individual, not a structure that you apply on to others based on your idea of what social universal happiness is. So that's the problem with intentional communities being addressed as forms instead of looking at the people. That's it. Stay sideways.